Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to talk about chimeras. Now, chimeras are when one animal shares two different genetic lines. Usually this occurs in uh, when they're a fetus stage, or maybe there was two different fetuses in the womb, and somehow they fused into one animal. Now, way back, I would have never expected this to be possible, but a couple of years ago, they started to say that some creatures that were found that had two distinctive genetic lines. And one of the ones that they touted quite often was this cat here. It was said that this, there's a half of a cat is from one genetic line and the other half is the other genetic line. And you can see it's split right down the middle and they called it a chimera. Now, at that time, it was kind of a, a new discovery, and there had been a couple cases where people had uh, undergone blood testing and unusual results were found, and they eventually were discovered to have two genetic lines inside them, but this was kind of a new discovery. Well, now, if you look at it, it goes back for many, many years since before I was born, and interestingly, this particular... Um, article is saying that it is even, it is not, this animal has not been tested and it may not even be a chimera. So I don't know how this thing got, became the poster child, but um, also interestingly, they're saying that um, chimeras are not that unusual and that there's probably kind of a lot of them. It's just that you don't always know about it. So that's kind of new because when I first heard of it, chimeras were very rare. Okay. So they're talking about chimeras here. A genet genetic chimerism or chimera is a single organism composed of cells with distinct genotypes. In, this an in, this, in animals, this means an individual derived from, from two or more zygotes. I like that, two or more. So that kind of opens the door that there could be chimeras with more than two, although I have not heard of that, which can include possessing blood cells of different blood types, subtle variations in form, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now they actually go into different types here. Uh, tetra tetragametic chimerism is a form of congenital chimerism. This occurs through fertilization of two separate ova by two sperm cells, and somehow these uh, aggregate into a single organism that is born and in many cases looks normal. And then there's microchimerism. This is also something I've just recently been hearing about. And they are saying that um, most people have a, a little bit of genetics from their mother that somehow got into the gamete and survived. Now, in my old timeline, um, something that was not, uh, that had a different DNA like that would be, would trigger an immune response and would be destroyed by white blood cells. But in this timeline and recent shifts, they're saying that somehow, especially if, the uh, fusion occurs earlier, then it is not rejected. So that's microchimerism. Symbiotic chimerism in anglerfish. This is an interesting one. Um, if you remember the first time you saw an anglerfish, it was just a, a kind of a fat fish with a little dangly thing in front. And it would say, oh, this, it would wiggle this thing and it would try to attract prey animals because it looked like a worm. Then a bit a little bit later, you that... They, they showed the anglerfish, and that was a, it became a glowing little, uh, little lure here. And uh, now if you look at the anglerfish, I mean, they've gotten more and more extreme, and there's, like, they're getting more and more weird parts on them. I mean, look at that thing. But one thing that I've been um, hearing a lot about just recently is the mating cycle of the of the anglerfish what they're saying is that there's a tiny little male and a huge female and the male actually attaches to the female and fuses with the female and loses its separate identity and takes on her bloodstream and that's the last I'd heard but today looking into it they're also saying now that the the male will actually slowly disintegrate and disappear and only his gonads will remain fused to the side of the anglerfish. So that's pretty creepy. So they're calling that, um, what's that word? The, um, symbiotic chimerism. So basically they're two separate gametes that grew up into a separate adults, but then chose to fuse again. Uh, now, I don't know if you've seen some of these really creepy anglerfish, but so this, this whole thing is natural here. And then this little thing right here, 
would be the fused male, which supposedly slowly disintegrates. Now, some of these anglerfish have just become over the top. Uh, they've grown bigger stomachs, a whole bunch of more weird dealy boppers. Like, look at this one has a huge, big old dealy bopper thing. Um, they're just, they're getting more and more crazy. Oh, here's another ridiculous one. Look at that. All those dangly things, glowing, ridiculous. Anyway, so um, anglerfish are the latest uh, really weird sexual mating process thing going on, and they're also an example of this uh, symbiotic chimerism. Also, apparently, they're doing chimera research by artificially selecting selectively transplanting embryonic cells from one organism onto the embryo of another. That's pretty new. You know, just two years ago, they were just learning about chimerism in my timeline, but now they've been researching it since who knows when. I mean, a lot of these uh, chimera things were known for, like, from since before I was born even. Uh, it looks like they've been researching it at least 20 years now. Chimeric mice are important animals in biologic research as they allow the inv investigation of a variety of biological questions in an animal that has two distinct genetic pools within it. Okay, well, that's all new for me, but since this discovery occurred in 1988. Okay, so here's an example of chimerism in humans. Um, the Dutch sprinter Fouquet Dilemma, interesting last name there, was expelled from the 1950 national team after she refused a mandatory sex test in July 1950. Later investigations revealed a Y chromosome in her body cells, and the analysis showed that she probably was a 46XX46XY mosaic female. Now, they're starting to use this weird um, way of writing out for um, mosaic humans. I have to research this a little bit more, but apparently this describes um, how many of each type of um, germ line they have. So th this female here was a half male, half female chimera, this 1950s person um, in this timeline. In my old timeline, they didn't know about that yet. That brings up an interesting subject that will be covered in the next video. And uh, so that's it for today. Venus, that's the kitty here, the famous first chimera cat, which may or may not be a chimera cat now in this timeline, but it was definitely a very interesting start to a lot of weird genetic stuff in this timeline. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.